Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Industrialization is more elusive than ever. Developing countries have seen their policy space shrink due to liberalization commitments in various trade and investment agreements. The environmental space is also limited as we continue to push at planetary boundaries. Though the words industrial or industrialization are not found in any of the outcome documents from Monterey, Doha, or the New York Crisis Conference, the policies needed to deliver sustained growth and produce structural transformation are necessarily industrial policies. Unresolved systemic issues arising from uncoordinated and incoherent actions on macroeconomic imbalances, disagreements over a global reserve currency, poor regulation of finance, and weak management of capital accounts place further limits at pursuing policies that increase productivity and enhance capabilities because these create unstable environments. When we need to look, uh, take a critical look at investment flows that search for gains from interest rate or currency arbitrage brought on by very loose monetary policies of developed countries. These flows affect the value of developing country currencies as well as their asset prices. Governments in turn have to spend their energies on defending export prospects and ensuring that asset bubbles do not threaten their economies and people's livelihoods and well-being. The more globally integrated developing countries are, the more vulnerable their economies are to business cycles generated by policy changes of systemically significant countries. The zero drafts promise of a global financial safety net appears hinged on the IMF, whose record at resolving financial crisis is poor. Meanwhile, the commitment to support capacity building for capital flow management is inadequate. The United Nations agencies and programs need to be tasked to devise new regulations and policy options for developing countries to effectively manage their capital account and reduce vulnerability to external sources of macroeconomic instability. Two, there are multiple references to development banking, national, regional, or multilateral. In several of these references, infrastructure receives attention, almost as if it is only public goods that require financing. Granting that public goods require financing, there are many other public goods. And if there is a need to focus on infrastructure, then social infrastructure needs to be given as much, if not more, attention so that socially reproductive activities and the provision of care can be fully supported. Lastly, development banking is not only about concessional lending. It is also about credit allocation towards productivity-enhancing industrial activities, as opposed to, say, real estate development, including providing investment guarantees to SMEs, as the Monterey Consensus had suggested. In a similar vein, central banking needs to be more developmental by promoting policies and strengthening regulation that enable industrial activities as well as promote financial inclusion rather than be distracted by the uncertainties of global financial markets. Three, the section on technology should be deleted. In the Monterey and Doha outcome documents, technology was referred to in the context of technology transfer through inter-enterprise partnership and as the development impact of FDI. The Zero Draft has technology, innovation, and capacity building as practically meeting all the requirements of sustainable development. The irony is that technological production can be intensive in the use of minerals, and it can appropriate indigenous knowledge. The Zero Draft ignores the reality behind technological advancement. One, that technological capabilities are learnings accumulated over time so that there is first mover advantage. Two, there are agglomeration economies in building technological capabilities. Three, technological production and research and development are highly concentrated in certain regions or in small groups of firms. Four, intellectual property rights regimes create monopolies that heighten this concentration. All of these are barriers to entry for those who still need to develop their technological capabilities. Thus, the Zero Draft's focus on innovation and research and development will only benefit those who are already at the frontiers of knowledge. Finally, even if firms in developing countries are able to move up the value chain through technological upgrading, there is no guarantee that there will be a parallel social upgrading for the workers in that value chain. 
Generally, increases in productivity do not automatically translate into wage and income increases, especially for women who are still overrepresented in low paid and precarious work. You need to org organize workers to demand for that to happen. And FFD is the wrong forum for discussing technology. It is a distraction away from systemic issues on which the FFD should focus. The systemic issues we face today are symptomatic of the financialization of economies, where the financial sector has become increasingly important in the generation of profits and more powerful in economic governance. Their fellow capitalists in production and trade become victims of the financial sector's excesses, especially small and medium enterprises and the women in this subsector. It is worse for the workers whose wage share of income has declined over the recent decade. Paragraph 100 of the Zero Draft makes a mockery of migrant workers by including them as a systemic issue. At the bottom are the women who must bear the burdens of care amidst market failures and state failures. The third conference on financing for development must focus on the resolution of all systemic issues if it is to contribute to the reduction of global inequality. Thank you. I think uh, Ms. Uh